I'm Mary Sonic, a division scientist at 3M. I want to welcome you to our video series on lead user research. Let me tell you a little about the video series. For some time now, Dr. Joan Churchill, Professor Eric von Hippel and I have been teaching lead user methods to innovation teams. Our videos bring together what we have learned about the key elements involved in conducting a successful lead user study. In this video, we address questions managers frequently ask about how to prepare for launching a lead user project. Let's get started. First, you'll learn the types of innovation goals that are especially good candidates for lead user studies, and then get some practical tips for maximizing the chances of a successful outcome. With me is Eric von Hippel, mm -hmm. and we're going to discuss the important factors uh, to take into consideration to define the focus of the project. What innovation goals are best suited to the lead user method? Well, um, my own view is big ones. An important project. After all, you're using very talented people and a significant amount of their time on the project. So you don't want to do something incremental. You want to do something that's worthy of the investment of their time and, and, and talents. At 3M, Lead user studies have typically resulted in concepts for entirely new product lines with sales projections in the hundreds of millions of dollars and the projected profit has been 12% higher than the corporate average. Let's look now at a few specific ways that organizations have used lead user studies. In many studies, like a 3M medical products study, the goal has been to create specific concepts for major new products. For many years, the medical products division has been a leader in developing a variety of products to prevent infection during surgical procedures. However, management recognized that infection control was undergoing radical change. What was happening was there was a decreasing effectiveness related to antibiotics. So management decided to undergo a lead user study in the area of infection control. With the help of lead users, the team developed concepts for several new products that were radically different than the division's existing offerings. An additional unexpected result was a new long-range innovation strategy that has been adopted by the division. Several other studies, such as the 3M Cooling Equipment Project, have been used to uncover major new applications and attractive markets for promising technologies. This division has developed a revolutionary cooling technology with a wide range of potential applications. For example, very fast and energy efficient cooling of foods, beverages, and medicine. What we were looking for basically was a big business opportunity. Who isn't, mm -hmm. right? right? And uh, the way I defined that was yeah. we needed to identify a radical breakthrough. And uh -huh. if we just looked into existing markets and launch a product, then we're going to be a Me Too and be up against the existing competitors. So um, okay. it seemed like working with lead users was the best way to really get some breakthrough ideas mm -hmm. and identify new market opportunities. The team ultimately found an attractive initial market for its pioneering new technology in the food processing field. Then lead users in that field helped the team craft a very effective entry strategy for that market. Lead user studies, like one conducted by Nestle, have also been used to identify new long-range innovation strategies. In the Nestle Lead User Project, the goal was to identify a strategy for competing in food categories that were new to Nestle. The result was a radical new approach to the process of developing and customizing food products. In summary, then, these are three common ways that companies have successfully applied lead user studies and often studies have produced more than one of these outcomes. I'd like your thoughts, Eric, on another important planning issue. Mm -hmm. In your view, is it important to nail down the specific innovation goals at the start of the project? Yeah, that's a very important question, and happily and interestingly for the method, it turns out not to be too critical to exactly specify your project focus. The reason it's important that you don't have to is because Lead user projects deal with the unexpected, and you want to go where the unexpected uh, uh, leads you without too much constraint. As illustration, the medical products team started out with a relatively narrow goal of creating a new type of surgical drape. However, with the help of lead users and leading experts, the team identified entirely new approaches to infection prevention, approaches the team couldn't have imagined at the beginning of the study. So being too tight and rigid about defining what you want in the beginning is not necessary and in fact that effort will be wasted 
because in fact the study will take you to a different place anyway. Coming up now, some planning tips that will maximize the chances of a very productive lead user study. Let's start with how to select the people who will serve on your research team because a very capable team is really essential. Now the specific makeup of the team will obviously vary depending on the project topic, but there are a few common sense selection guidelines to keep in mind. We recommend a four or five person team. Now this team should include people who have a strong knowledge base in each area that is critical to your project. For example, suppose your study involves developing new product concepts or identifying new technology applications. Then you want the team to include a technical specialist like Greg Sherwood, cooling project team member. Greg Sherwood had excellent knowledge and experience in the target innovation area. Greg is also recognized in his division as an innovator, and in fact, was one of the actual inventors of the pioneering technology that was the focus of the lead user study. Many lead user studies involve identifying new markets and emerging customer needs. If this is one focus of your study, then the team should include a person like marketing manager Susan Heestand. She was a team member in the medical product study that we mentioned earlier. Susan had broad-based marketing knowledge and experience in the medical products business. For example, over her years at 3M, her work has ranged from marketing research and managing product lines to portfolio management and corporate level strategic planning. Now, if you're doing a strategy study, then it will be important to have at least one team member, like Susan again, who really knows your business priorities and has strategy development experience. In summary, a key to your project success will be assembling a team of people with excellent knowledge and experience in each area that is critical to project success. Let's look now at another key success factor. In our experience, it's a must for the research team to have very strong support from senior management. Now, the reason this is so important, when the goals are big ones, like in the examples you saw earlier, the study outcomes could require some major changes or even some disruptions in your business. So at the start of your study, you really want to be very sure that all of your business leaders endorse the goals and have really considered their implications. Early in the planning, all key managers typically meet to think through their business goals and priorities. This ensures that everyone's interests are taken into account. The business priorities of management are then outlined in a master project plan so that the research team has a clear direction regarding what the study should accomplish. We also recommend appointing a senior level manager to take on the role of study champion, so to speak or better yet, have key managers actually serve on your team. This was the case in a study conducted by 3M's Commercial Graphics Division, and it paid really big dividends for that group. In the Commercial Graphics Lead User Study, the core research team included laboratory manager Dan Pohl, who served as team leader, and Charlie Callisto, marketing manager for the division. Dan, what was the goal set for this project? The vision that Charlie and I had was to dramatically improve the application of graphics in our industry. Mm -hmm. It's a real problem today. I'll, I'll give you an example. It takes about 24 minutes to print the graphics for the entire trailer. Mm -hmm. It takes about 48 man hours to apply those same graphics to a trailer. So technology has had a big impact on the printing of graphics, but really no impact on the application of graphics. It remains very difficult, time-consuming, and slow. With the help of lead users, the research team created a family of new product concepts that would radically reduce the time, effort, and cost of applying graphics. However, implementing these outcomes would require major changes in the way the division did business. As influential managers, Dan and Charlie were able to gain the upper management support that was necessary for making these changes. The communication link that we were able to maintain with upper management has really helped us in the early adoption of some of the ideas and concepts from the lead user team. For instance, we're already introducing several of the tool concepts uh, that were developed in the lead user study. Now some businesses can't realistically free up managers to be on the team. 
In these cases, another good option is a team sponsor like Shirin Sadat in the medical product study. She worked very closely with the team and she provided that essential communication link with upper management. Now a final point about management involvement. After the lead user study, we strongly suggest that your project sponsors stay involved through that next implementation step. Here's what Dan Pohl has to say about this. Another thing that's really helped us is the, uh, the continuity that we've had of some of the players. Of the six people that we had on the lead user team, four of them, including Charlie and I, are really following this project along and are involved in implementation. So I think that, is, that linkage has really proved to be effective. What we're saying then, these are specific ways that your upper management can make very important contributions to your project success. In conclusion, a successful lead user study requires the combined efforts of a top-notch team and senior managers who are willing to personally invest in the study. The payoff can be big results, a whole new business direction, concepts for breakthrough products and services.